Yo, so let's let's go ahead and get this started. So we're gonna start with uh, Justin Fields. So Justin Fields is 17 for 28, 123 yards, three touchdowns, 15 carries, 178 yards on the ground, and a touchdown, um, touchdown on the ground. Uh, Mooney and Claypool are gonna be a great one-two punch to transition this Bears team into the next generation of uh, good football. If if Justin is gonna play like that. They're going to win a lot more games than they lose. Uh, and we're, we're really going to have to start having a conversation. Who would you rather have, Justin Fields, Trevor Lawrence, or um, or Kyler Murray? Because as I'm going to talk about in the next in the next, uh, the next segment, what the hell is going on in uh, Arizona? But so we're going to talk about all the good stuff. They ended up losing. They ended up losing. But I think um, if there's such a thing, such a thing is a great loss because – they saw some things they could put together. And so on the prop, you know, before we get started, look, I am Wakanda ready for, I'm going to see it on Saturday. I am ready. But anyway, um, we, um, lost my train of thought. So the offense did what? The offense did what? You expected the defense to kind of be shaky with them trading their best tackler and their, and uh, Robert Quinn. You expected the defense to not be, um, Good, but it was it was decent. Steve gave up 35 points to one of the best offenses in the league until it's healthy, but you didn't give up 40, 50, you know. Um great play calling. Um on the on the broadcast they were talking about they took some of the elements that made Lamar successful and uh in- implemented them with Justin Fields. That is an excellent baseline to start with. He's an athlete. Let him be an athlete. Um and then as he gets older and progresses, we can get better and work the passing game and get better with the passing game as Lamar has gotten. Now, Lamar still needs to be more consistent, but if you can get that passing game to be average or above average, as long with the running game, you got something special. And then you fill out the rest of the roster as you get a chance. Um, really, really great play calling. Like I said, Luke Geske and Mac Eberflew are calling really good games after, um, after the first couple of weeks trying to force him to be something he wasn't. Um, they, they, it looked like they've took took in the reins off of him and just said, "Look, Fields, go make plays, bro. Go make plays." And this is this is what he does. He sets, I think it's a raisin, regular season record in rushing yards by by a quarterback. Of course, it was one of us. Because um, Cap holds the record in the playoffs. Just really, really good. Now, granted, they lost. So you'd be like, "He's how can it be a good loss?" It's a good loss because we didn't expect the team to do anything. They're probably the best three and sixteen. They're probably the best three and sixteen. I'm taking this. If I don't know if Arizona plays them, but if they play Arizona, I'm taking the Bears. Just based off the fact that Arizona might have more talent, but they have less. They have not good coaching, and that's just from my experience. So moving on, moving on to Arizona. Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray was 25 for 32, 175 yards. Um, I think it's time to shake something up there. I don't know what it is. I go with coaching, but um, I don't know. Uh, Colin Murray, I don't know, maybe he's hurt or something. He he doesn't look like, yeah, he made some runs yesterday, but he, he looks like he has a lot on his mind. It looks like he's playing really, really heavy, right? And it's probably from that contract, trying to, you know, trying to live up to that contract. That's kind of what it looks like. But, um, Geno Smith outplayed him. He was a better game manager than Kyler Murray was a dynamic athlete. Geno Smith was 26 for 39, 26 for 34, 275 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. Interception was crazy. It was one of those, uh, what's his name? Xavier Collins dissected the interception. Boom, caught that mug. was out of there. I'm, I'm showing it right now. Um, yeah, Cliff Kingsbury needs to get it together. Because it just looks like it's coaching that's the problem. Um, the arguing on the sideline. Um, just, I, 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 I don't know. I don't I don't even know what to make it this Cardinals team. It was like at no point did I think the Cardinals was going to win. Even when they scored and it was 24-21. Um, I, I didn't think they was going to win. I had no qualms about thinking they were going to win. And then Gino um, conducts a masterful drive 
to get them back to drive them down the field and score to make it 31 21 and that was the end of the game right there but for me personally it just looked like they were out coached out manned um and seattle is not better than the cardinals like talent for talent the cardinals are better like they should win this game but for some reason i'm not sure as to what's going on with the cardinals but something has to change um Seattle has been a sleeper all, all year. If you're a football guy, this is one of the games that you liked. It was ugly, um, physical, and um, it was a good football game. So, uh, good job, Geno Smith. I think I said this last week. He's running away with that uh, comeback player of the year. And uh, it's going to be great to see that speech when he gets it. So, um, so by popular demand, I've been told to uh well suggested i say suggested to just absolutely destroy the cardinals right i'm not gonna do it i'm not gonna destroy the cardinals um i'm just gonna explain what the hell is going on with the cardinals or not the cardinals i'm sorry the panthers um what's going on with the panthers so pj walker did nothing i'm not even gonna say his stats he did nothing and so um Baker Mayfield came in the game and got some garbage touchdowns. This game was, at one point, this game was 34 to 0. Baker Mayfield came in and had some garbage touchdowns, and I'm sure I haven't watched Undisputed. I don't really watch sports media like I used to anyway, because you guys know some stuff that's going on in the NBA if you know, you know. Um, but I, I didn't have very big expectations for this team to begin with. I didn't believe in Baker anyway. But they didn't, go, didn't have P.J. Walker come in and light the world on fire last week. And then for him to look like that this week, I was like, what is going on? You bring Cam back last year and then not give him the reins to the offense and then blame him for not learning the playbook. But then you traded for Sam Darnold in the offseason. And then Sam Darnold was equally as terrible. I don't know why Sam Brown even went number two in that draft. He was not very good. He had a couple. He had a couple good games in college, and people lost their mind. Sam Darnold was never that good to begin with. Um, at least Carson Wentz won back-to-back championships at North Dakota State when he was in college. Sam Darnold did nothing in big college football. Um, then you bring Baker, and who's terrible, and then you fire Matt Rule. And you look awful here. Then you bench PJ and then pit Baker back in. Like, what is the direction of this organization? Carolina has no organization. No, no direction. Um, I have no idea what the hell is going on. <laughs> what the hell? Um, I'm not one for tanking, but they need to tank for the first pick. And I, this is a hot take. I don't think, um, Houston, let's say when Houston gets gets the top five pick, they're not taking a quarterback. I think they believe in David Smith or David Mills, he, which he's not bad. He played well, but his ceiling is not very high. Um, I think they're going to stick with him and just build that roster back out because Levy Smith has that, offense, that defense playing well. So I don't necessarily know if they're even going to get a quarterback. I think they're going to convince themselves that Mills is the answer, which he's not the answer. But I think they're going to convince themselves that. Um, Carolina needs to just blow it up. And I know we have the deadline, and they traded um, Robbie Anderson already, who's not looking good um, for the Cardinals. The deadline has passed, so obviously you're stuck with what you're stuck with. But in the offseason, in the offseason, you got to look at not bringing Baker back, just wiping the slate clean. I say keep PJ Brown or PJ Walker. Um, have him be in camp with you and um uh, i don't think sean payton would want this job um i don't know where you go i don't know where you go you try to get the guy from usc um he just signed a big contract so he's probably not going anywhere uh it's rough it's rough for carolina it's rough for carolina i don't even know necessarily what they could even do to be for real um so yeah that's pretty much that's pretty much what I what I got for Carolina. Um, it's a slow day, not very not very much ball. A lot of our guys played primetime this week. So uh, if you didn't see my primetime games uh, 
for the Eagles is right here. If you didn't see my primetime game for uh, Kansas City, is right here. And if you didn't see my primetime game for Lamar, it's right here. So uh, that's all I got for you guys. Um, I'll talk to you guys next week. Peace. Oh, one more thing before I go. I'm sure everybody's clicked out already. One more thing before I go. Um, I got a community tab. So uh, if you don't see videos from me, like when crazy stuff happens, check my community tab. That's where I'm going to be posting quick form uh, stuff if you want to get in contact with me and you're not on Instagram. And if you're not on Instagram, you need to be on Instagram because that's where I interact with everybody. Uh, links in the description and I'm out.